28 January 2024 The Promise of Pumice My feet have been a trial to me over the years. Today, I shall talk about my heels only, leaving my plantar fasciitis from heel to toe aside, along with the horror show that is my toes without even getting into the neuropathic pain they constantly force me to endure. No, today is for my heels, for for once we have here a success story. There was once, comfortably over a decade ago, that I was on Boracay with a companion. My companion was getting a pedicure, so I, with nothing else to do, decided to join her in this action. This was long overdue in my case. The calluses on my heels had cracks that had grown to deep crevices. So deep were these cracks that the poor girl assigned to my case could only do so much before admitting defeat. She couldn't go any further, she told both me and my companion, because the crevices in my heel calluses went all the way through my skin to the flesh underneath. She had done what she could, but to do more risked me injury. She was quite apologetic, but she need not have worried about my reaction. I was impressed that she had managed as much as she had. Fast forward several years, and the cracks in my heels have again broadened and deepened to the point of being painful, and as such they will leave bloody traces behind me if I am walking barefoot in summer. Obviously, this cannot do. But what is it I am to do about it? Well, my sister came to my aid, and not just because it was the floors of her house that the traces of blood from my heels was first discovered. I was given a jar of cream to soften the calluses and encourage them in their healing as they were bound together by bandages, both gauze initially and plaster laterally. This did its work. The crevices soon disappeared and walking became less painful and less bloody. Step one of the heel project was complete. The cracks in my calluses may have disappeared, but those calluses in my heels were still in full bloom. All that required was a bit of dry air and my usual neglect, and the cracks would be back to plague me. To forestall this, my sister gifted me an additional prize. This was an actual pumice stone. I was initially skeptical. After all, it was a rock. Sure, it was cut and smooth such that it now resembled a rugby ball, less pointed at the ends than an American football. But it was still a rock, just the rock, nevertheless. A rock that, believe it or not, came with a set of instructions. Instructions on how to use a rock. I said that it had been smoothed, which is true, but the nature of pumice is that it is filled with holes. These holes burst out to the surface, and it was with the holes on the rock surface that I was to rub the callous heels of my feet. Well, skeptical though I may have been, I now had the rock and instructions in hand, for free, and it wasn't going to cost me anything more to use it now that I had it. That was a few months ago, and I am a skeptic no longer. The pumice has done its job. The calluses on my heel are no longer. In fact, the heels of my feet have become almost embarrassingly supple and soft. It's like a baby's bottom they are. Now, while still using the pumice stone each day, it is merely as momentary maintenance to prevent any return of those my calluses. For once, the story of my feet has been one of victory. If only that triumph could spread to my toes. Ah, well, a W is a W, so let's not get greedy. There is, however, one remaining test of the pumice to be performed. I'm out for a coffee now but I'll make the test and let you know as soon as I'm home. Does the pumice float? It does. It does indeed. The pumice floats. I may not quite be willing to go on a three-hour cruise on it, but it does indeed float. The only rock with a buoyancy light enough to float in water, a buoyancy caused by those very holes I mentioned above, it is proof that this is the real McCoy, that I've got a bit of volcanic ejecta, earth spunk, if you will, on my hands and heels. And, 
on that utterly inappropriate mental image, I will bring today's post to a close.